A number of you saw this image on my Instagram of a mother and bear cub that I painted during an event and donated for a fundraiser. It was for this organization called Walk With Me, which walks with grieving families who've just lost a child. And it's an, an amazing organization, but this, this painting was painted on the spot and donated, so I didn't get a chance to film any of it. I didn't even get to scan it. But since quite a few of you really loved this image and asked for a tutorial of it, I thought I would go ahead and repaint it. Now, word of warning, anytime you do a repainted version of something, especially if you use a lot of wet and wet, it's never gonna look exactly the same as the original. So just be aware of that and we're just gonna see how it goes today. So I've already sketched on the bears. This is a nine by 12 inch block of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. I love these blocks because they're glued down on the sides. They don't warp and pop up while you're painting, especially with a lot of water because they're already pre-stretched. I've got my standard 18 well palette here with a number of different brushes in multiple sizes. Since we're working fairly large today, it's good to have a larger round brush on hand. This is a Princeton Snap size 12 round brush. Really nice synthetic brushes. I've just recently discovered these and really like them. And I'll be using my silver black velvet size eight brush for more of the smaller details and a size two silver black velvet brush for little details like the eyes and nose. And then for some of those washes and fun waves of color around the outer edges, I'm gonna be using my half inch Princeton Neptune flat brush. Make sure you have plenty of paper towel for blotting. I like to have two different water jars, one for clean water, one for dirty. And I have my reference image pulled up right in front of me on the computer screen. It's so important to have it so that you can zoom in and out and see those details a little bit closer. So having it on a second screen is really preferable. To speed up the process of wetting your paper, you can start by spraying your paper with a spray bottle and then spreading the water around with a clean brush. I'm using here a Princeton Snap size 12 round brush. Now I'm mixing up some transparent brown oxide. You'll need to work quickly to get the best effect with wet and wet, but just go ahead and drop in the paint in all the areas where you see midtones or darks in your reference photo. So I'm loosely following my photo for guidance for the soft brown fur on the mother and on the baby. We're just going for a nice light brown first layer everywhere we see these lighter tones in the reference photo. You can also add some fun drips and guide those downward with lots of water for a loose and more brushy effect on your painting. I use a heat tool to speed up the drying and dry that first layer. And then I re-wet the paper again with a spray bottle and a second brush. Here I'm using a Princeton Neptune half inch flat brush. Now I'm actually just gonna go over that first layer with a second layer of transparent brown oxide, this time beginning to darken up some of the darker shadows like around the mother's eyes. Using more careful brush strokes at this point and using my half inch flat brush for fun broad brush strokes. As it begins to dry, you'll notice that the brush strokes you lay down will stay put more. They aren't gonna spread out quite as much as that first layer did which can be helpful if you're trying to create some fur texture already in the second layer. Now is your chance to really play with shapes and lay down the dark, strong shapes that you want for your composition. You can also start thinking about lost and found edges, perhaps where you want some shadow shapes to connect from the baby to the mom. Now that that layer is done, we can start adding dark details. To create black, I like to mix indigo and transparent brown oxide. This is the color I use for the mother's nose. I do switch to a smaller brush for these details, and I add a little bit of water to soften that dark color into the muzzle and begin adding fur texture using my transparent brown oxide and this dark brown patch above the nose, allowing a little bit of a highlight to remain untouched at the top of the nose itself. You can also lift out this area where there's a split in her lip. Now, if this video is moving too fast for you, I wanted to let you know that the full length real-time version of this tutorial is available through my Watercolor Mastery membership. The monthly membership includes over 100 narrated watercolor tutorials, including a comprehensive 30-day course just for beginners. There are lessons on painting skin tones and fur texture and tons of fun painting projects for all levels. Many of the tutorials include drawing instruction, but they each come with a downloadable reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. 
I'm going to go over the bear with a third layer of clean water. By now, it should all be dry. Always make sure when you're doing wet and wet layers that you let the layer beneath dry completely before adding more layers. And now I'm really beginning to drop in those dark, soft shadows in the ears and in the center of the head. You can see when you use the wet and wet technique, that paint just explodes and flows outward. It's a really beautiful effect, particularly for soft fur. So I love using this for anything that has soft fur, like these bears are perfect for this technique. You can also spread out the bristles of your brush and use those separated bristles to create more manipulated fur texture across the forehead. Just always observe your reference photo and make sure that you're moving your brush in the direction the fur is growing. Particularly on a bear's head, you're gonna see kind of the center of the head being the beginning or the origin of the fur growth. And all of the fur will splay outward and away from that center point. We're beginning to darken up these shadow tones in the eyes and ears, still using just transparent brown oxide, a little bit of burnt sienna, and my indigo color to help neutralize those browns. Here I'm using some more yellow ochre to add little pops of more of a warm tone to that fur. And then if the details look a little bit too linear, you can take a soft, damp brush and just smooth and soften those out. Begin to darken the center of the head with another wash. You can do this wet on dry or wet on wet. And we're just continuing to increase our values all throughout the mother bear's head. Once you're happy with your initial washes, you can begin adding details. I'm now taking a small size four silver black velvet round brush and painting the black details on the baby's head. The baby's face is really the emotional focal point of this composition. And I would say the mother bear's head is more of the compositional focal point since she dominates most of the space. But our eyes are naturally drawn to the baby's face because we see those eye details and the little smiling mouth. And because this is where our eyes are naturally drawn, we wanna spend a little extra time on these details. So don't be afraid to really slow down, get out your small brushes and work on some really nice fine details like hair texture, paint carefully around any highlights that you see in the reference photo. Once again, for that beautiful fur texture, I'm just taking a round brush and splaying out the bristles a little bit, allowing some natural separation. And that's what I use to shortcut all of this fur texture. It would be painstaking and take a really long time if you were just to use one tiny round brush to paint every single piece of fur. So this is one of my favorite shortcut methods and I also think it looks really good. Now just for fun, I'm adding some pops of blue. This is ultramarine blue and increasing the dark shadow in between the mother's body and the baby bear. I'm adding some more burnt sienna for more reddish brown tones in the baby bear's face and soft, gentle, parallel brush strokes for those fur details. Here I'm adding some strong brush strokes with my half inch flat brush using ultramarine blue. And this is really helping bring the composition together, help the mother and baby feel closer and also adding some much needed pops of cool color. I'm using my indigo to really increase the shadows now and adding some final fur details to the baby's face. You could also use a grainer brush or something that is more designed for fur texture. I didn't have one on my desk at the time, so I just stuck with a round brush and I'm a little bit hard on my brushes. You can kind of smash them down and let those bristles separate for the most beautiful fur texture. Now for the final details, you're going to introduce your darkest darks, like the eyes in the mother and baby and the dark shadow shapes within the ears. I wanted the mother bear to look really gentle, not at all scary or harsh, and so I tried to add some little eyelash details and just to make her look really soft and protective. Adding some final fur details with my transparent brown oxide, you can see how I spread out the bristles of the brush for that. And then for these ridges along the muzzle, these are really important because they're helping define the anatomy of the face. Once again, using my half inch flat brush, I add some final big, broad, bold blue brush strokes all around the composition. You can also incorporate a few of these in Mother Bear's head. This just helps bring in some much needed pops of cool color. And then since there are a couple tiny whiskers in the reference photo, I wanted to include these. So I'm taking my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and a tiny size two round brush and painting in a couple of little whiskers and final details on the mother bear's nose. And you could also add some little hints of white fur in the baby's head. Yeah, there we go. So fun. 
you guys will be able to see this one side by side next to the original painting and you can decide for yourself which one you liked better i really like my my new version of it actually i had so much fun painting this and i didn't mind doing it twice in a row at all because this was such a fun composition for me and i just love that getting into those details with the fur texture and all the fun washes of color so i hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as i did thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again soon